We have already seen about the lithosphere of our earth. It is the outermost layer of our earth which contains the earth's crust also. And we should also know that the lithosphere contains a number of plates and these plates are called lithospheric plates. To have a look of our earth's lithosphere, we can take a rubber ball or a coconut as an example. So for example, if you are taking a coconut, it has a shell on the outer part and also a rubber ball has the rubber part on the outer side. So these are the examples of the lithosphere, the outermost part of our earth. And when we say plates, if we take a rubber ball and also a coconut, in both these cases, the outermost part is a single part. A shell is a single part. You have to break it later. But the earth's lithosphere is not a single part. It contains number of plates and these plates are called lithospheric plates or tectonic plates. An example will be a jigsaw puzzle. So in a jigsaw puzzle you have number of pieces where each piece will be in a different shape and uh, it will border the other piece next to it. Similarly these plates will be like a jigsaw puzzle piece and they move very slowly. On an average they move a few millimeters it will be 3 to 15 centimeters or uh, 30 to 150 millimeters per year and this movement is because of the movement of molten magma the lava inside the earth under the earth's surface so how does this magma moves this magma will move in a circular manner so for example if you take some water in a beaker and boil it and put a paper pellet that is uh, take a paper and water it like a uh, ball and put it inside this water and boil it and after some time when the water starts boiling what happens is this ball will move in a circular motion so it will move in a circular motion then again it will move to next place then there also it will move in a circular motion so this type of motion is only happening inside the earth's surface under the earth's surface so when this magma is moving in a circular manner on the top of it you have the earth's crust and the lithospheric plates so even the plates will start moving. So the movement of these plates will cause changes on the surface of the earth also. So the movements on the earth are divided on the basis of the forces that is causing these movements. So we will divide them into two forces. So the first will be the forces that acts under the surface of the earth or in the interior of the earth. So that is called endogenic force and the other force that will act on the surface of the earth that is what we call as exogenic force. Endo means inside and exo means outside. So, endogenic forces and exogenic forces. So, under endogenic forces, we have two types of movements that happens because of this force. One is sudden movement and other will be slow movement. So, sudden movement will be earthquake, volcano, then landslides. About this we will see later. Then slow movements will be diastrophic motions that is caused because of this uh, diastrophic forces. And then these diastrophic motion will cause building mountains and building continents. Then we have exogenic forces and it will be erosional and depositional forces. And the agents that cause these two uh, actions will be river, wind, then sea waves and also glaciers. Under endogenic force, the first thing we are going to see is volcano. So volcano is a vent or an opening that is formed on the earth's crust and under the earth's crust we have the mantle so this start from the mantle so after the mantle the lava comes through the crust and outside the earth's surface so this happens suddenly this molten lava or uh, the magma comes out suddenly so this is called an endogenic force because the force is coming from inside the earth's interior and uh, the volcanic mountain is part of this volcanic setup or volcano so here you have the vent then the volcanic mountain uh, then uh, the crater through which the gas uh, ash and even the lava comes out so this is the volcanic setup and this will be an endogenic force example so next we'll see the other part of uh, endogenic force that is the earthquake many of you must have heard about an earthquake or sometimes even felt if you had uh, in your area mostly in recent years it was mild only so an earthquake is nothing but the vibration on the earth's surface that is caused because of the tectonic or lithospheric plates movements so the plates when they move sometimes they dash each other or sometimes they overlap either on or below best example will be the tsunami so where uh, an overlapping of the 
plates took place and on the surface we had the earthquake. So when they move, the place where they dash or overlap, in that particular point inside the earth's crust, that point is called the focus or even hypercenter. And from the focus on the earth's surface, the place or the point is called epicenter. So from this epicenter only, the vibration started to travel and cause damage on the earth's surface. And these vibrations, they travel as waves. And usually the damage will be very close to the epicenter. And away from the epicenter, the damage will start to decrease. And these waves are of four types. One is P waves or longitudinal waves. These are also called primary waves. They are the first waves to come after the plates clash. And next will be S waves or transverse waves or the secondary wave, the next type of waves that is caused after the clash of the plates. And the last type will be L waves and R waves or surface waves. L waves means love waves and R waves means rally waves. These two are the surface waves and they cause the maximum damage on the Earth's surface. Next, we'll see about the earthquake prediction. Is it possible to predict the earthquake? Not yet and not possible also because it's a sudden movement. Suddenly, the vibration starts and uh, next, next, the damage are created. But all these years, there were local methods either in some countries or in some civilizations or some villages. People use several local methods that include studying the animal behavior. Uh, for example, the reactions of a dog, cat or even birds. The next will be fish agitation. That is, suddenly the fish will start to agitate or uh, move up and down inside the water in a quick moment. The next will be snakes. Suddenly the snakes will start to come outside from the burrow or inside the hole. That too, as a lot, they'll start to come outside. So that is another behavior. And how do we measure the earthquake intensity? So we use a machine called a seismograph. So that records the various waves and we use a measurement to measure the magnitude of the earthquake. That is how much damage that the earthquake causes. So this magnitude or the measurement is called a Richter scale. So if on the Richter scale, if the measurement is less than 2.0, then there is very little damage. There is hardly any tremor or uh, vibration is felt. If the measurement is 5.0 or more on the Richter scale, then uh, there will be mild damage. Things will start falling down. If the measurement is more than 6.0, then the magnitude is high and uh, the damage is more. And if it's more than 7.0, then it's a major earthquake and the 2004 tsunami was more than 7.0. We will study about one earthquake incident which happened in our country. In 2001, on the Republic Day of our country, that is 26 January 2001, there was a massive earthquake that hit the Bhuj town in Gujarat. And the measurement on the Richter scale was 6.9, a very massive one, very strong one. This earthquake caused a heavy damage that almost all the school buildings were collapsed. And because of this, at least 971 students and 31 teachers lost their lives. And after three days, the most primary concern was food, blankets because it was very cold at that time, then medical supplies. They didn't reach everyone in that part. Because of this earthquake, phone lines, water pipelines, power lines, that is the power stations, transmission lines, were all blocked or damaged. So these services also were not available. Then in hundreds of places there were fire accidents because of the charcoal and cookers which overturned. You know in hotels or some places we use charcoal for cooking and also cookers or gas stoves or even the cylinders they got damaged and burst and they caused fire accidents. The president of India declared a state of emergency in the earthquake damage zone and the chief minister appealed for financial help and asked the center to deal with the disaster. So this is a case study where we should know what happened when an earthquake occurred. Next we'll see about the earthquake preparedness. How you should be prepared for an earthquake occurrence. So first thing where you have to take shelter. So it should be either under a kitchen counter or a kitchen top or a table that is under a table under a desk or it can be even in the corner of the room where the two walls meet or against a wall. So why this is because they will be sometimes protecting you either being caught in a complete crumble of uh, bricks or uh, mud pieces. So where you won't have any uh, gap to even breathe but if you are under or uh, if you have a gap of a table desk after even your inside the damaged place you will have space to breathe so you can survive with more possibility. Next where you should not be near fireplaces around chimneys because it will cause fire and it will damage you. Next where windows with mirrors or glass pieces are there and also 
picture frames which has glasses so these can also cause damage to you so here you should not be there you should move away from such places and finally spread this awareness to your friends and family members and one more thing very important one you should face such a situation confidently and bravely we'll see the next part in the next video of this chapter continue to register your comments thanks for watching and supporting my channel